Hello, my name is Only Jax, and today we're going to be taking a look at some YouTuber apologies. We're going to go over the anatomy of, give them a grade from 1 to 100, and tell them how they could have done better. Now a lot of people in my life said, Jax, you're really not the one who should be speaking on this subject. I mean, you're not perfect, and I think they're absolutely right, but they never said that I couldn't sing about it. YouTube apologies, gonna take a look at some people who've made a YouTube apology, and giving them a grade from 1 to 100, YouTube apologies. So just sit back, relax, and let's try to have some fun. The YouTuber apology. For some, it's the end of their career. For others, it's a badge of honor. But for the viewers, it's some of the best entertainment that this platform has to offer. Like Diamond's YouTube apologies are forever. A permanent stain on someone's channel page or timeline, always reminding them of that time that they said the gamer word, or the time that they falsely accused someone of plagiarism, or the time that they posted a video with a dead guy hanging from a tree, or in the worst case, did something with a minor. I've seen and read countless YouTuber apologies. And I have to tell you, that I'm tired. I am tired of the same few buzzwords or the 45 minute apology that could have been summed up in 10 minutes or less, as well as the infamous non-apology. We as viewers are not stupid and we know when we're being pandered to and lied to. Now that's not to say that an apology is ever going to be enough for some viewers and that's its own thing and some situations are actually past the point of repair but that doesn't mean that creators and viewers alike should settle for some of the apologies that we've had to sit through over the years. If you would like to just get into the apology ratings and skip my rubric and rationale please skip to here. So I'll get to the point. Someone needs to tell these degenerates where they went wrong, how good their apology was, and how to improve them. And I'm okay with taking on that responsibility. Okay, Jax, how do you plan to do this? Great, glad you asked. First, I have a list of creators here who have done a YouTuber apology, either in a video or over a Twitter post. And what I've done is I've gone through the list to give each creator a score out of 100. The points are assigned based off of the following rubric. Apology slash non-apology, 50 points. Sincerity, 10 points. Readiness, 10 points. Specificity, 10 points. Plan moving forward, 10 points. Length, you guessed it, 10 points. Using this rubric, we can assign a letter grade to each apology. After we assign a letter grade, we can then go through and point out what they did wrong and give them an example of an improved apology. This is gonna be me going through the rubric in detail. Uh, and again, if you would just like to skip to the apology, skip here. Our first category is apology versus non-apology, and this is worth 50 points. This is a pass or fail category, and it's a big one because should an apology fail this category, it will be impossible for them to score more than 50 points, which, unless you live in Canada, is a failing grade. You can you can Google that about the Canada thing. That's real. You can score 50 points on a test in Canada and still pass it. Long story short with this category, if it's a real apology, it gets 50 points, and if it's a non-apology, no points are awarded. For me to rule something a non-apology, the apology must have language like, I'm sorry if you were hurt or offended. Any apology with a qualifier, if you were hurt or offended, if I offended you, if my intentions were misinterpreted, serves not as an apology and more as an effort to clean up your image rather than to accept responsibility. Obviously, we'll look at each case in context, but in general, should an apology use language like, I'm sorry you feel that way, it gets a non-apology score of zero points. An apology where the offense is acknowledged and apologized for gets 50 points pass or fail. Next category is sincerity, and this is worth 10 points. The sincerity category assigns points based on how sincere and genuine an apology is. Are you really sorry for what happened, or are you just trying to appease an angry audience, or somewhere in between? This is not a pass or fail category, and you can earn anywhere between zero and 10 points on this one. Let's say 
for example, you said the gamer word on stream while playing Fortnite, and you don't actually have any problem with people using that word. You are a First Amendment free speech activist and think it's silly that people get canceled over words like this. However, your brand is suffering now that people think you're a racist. And so on behalf of your brand, you need to apologize. You really are sorry that your brand is suffering and that people are upset with you. And even though you personally don't have any problem with the use of that word, you understand why people are upset. So you issue a sincere apology and you commit to do better. This situation will score you between a five and an eight in this category, depending on how you come across. Readiness, 10 points. This category revolves around how much time exists between when the public was first alerted to your offense and when you got on your podium and apologized for it. This is an interesting category because I imagine most people are gonna score probably pretty high on it. Zero being you took an absurd amount of time to apologize and address the situation. 10 being as soon as you knew that this was going on, you addressed it and apologized. This is a subjective category, so you may not agree with how I approach it, and that's fine. The only reason that this category exists is because of the Cody Ko Tanamojo situation. Cody can't expect to get more than a zero in this category should he ever respond to his allegations. Specificity, 10 points. Specificity is just as it says. Are you being specific about what you're apologizing for? Sure, you apologize for your past behavior, but what was that behavior? Are you not being specific and just want an umbrella apology to appease the maximum number of people with putting a minimum amount of effort in? Into it. Zero points. Are you specifically apologizing for calling some of the F slur in DMs two years ago when you were in your edgy period? 10 points. Although that is a bad example because the F slur is Twitter appropriate again, so you see what I'm getting at. Plan moving forward. 10 points. This is an easy category and might not always apply. So if it doesn't apply, then you get the 10 points. I'm not going to, I'm not going to nickel and dime you on this one. Your plan moving forward should be short, sweet, and only require a slight tweak in behavior. If anything at all, anything too dramatic or out of character comes off as fake and insincere. However, sometimes if you're not dramatic enough, you can seem like you didn't really learn anything. In some cases, the apology and a pledge to do better is enough. Just like in the PewDiePie apologies, we'll see in a later video. Actually, we'll use him as the example here. So again, you said the n-word on stream. You made your apology and so far it's good, but when you get to telling people your plan moving forward, you say that you'll be taking a trip to Africa to provide new clothes to a hundred African children. This is a weird look. I mean, you weren't doing this before. This had never been your plan. You're not even known for doing charitable acts like this. And furthermore, the African children that you're helping probably have no clue that you said the word in the first place. So you're not repairing a relationship here with the people that you disappointed. It's unlike you, it's out of character, and it's easy to point out as something you're only doing for good PR, not because you simply wanted poor African children to have new t-shirts. Zero points. Now, let's say you made a good apology and end it with, this is not like me. I let myself become toxic, and that is 100% on me. I know that I'm better than this, and I will make every effort in the future to make sure you know that I'm better than this too. 10 points. I'm going to leave the option to score anywhere between 0 and 10 for this category because I can see... I can see me wanting to do that. Length. 10 points. Simple enough. You don't want your apology to be too long or too short. You want to get the entire apology out in the most efficient way. Ideally, an apology should look like, I'm sorry for scamming my community with the fatty coin because so many people who trusted me lost money on it. I should have known better and I took the deal to promote it despite those close to me screaming to me that it was a bad idea and I take full accountability for this. I took advantage of you and I am so sorry for betraying your trust in me. Moving forward, I will never ever ever again promote or shill any sort of financial anything with my platform. That whole thing takes around 30 seconds to say and meets every standard in the rubric. In general, any apology going over 10 minutes will get docked points. Short and sweet, please. Unfortunately, no extra credit will be awarded for getting liar tattooed on your cheek or putting charities to donate to in your video's description. Additionally, and I want to get this out of the way, no points will be docked if you decide to monetize the apology video. Once you are an influencer and or a YouTuber, any good thing that is publicized about you is work. So it seems to me that any negative thing that's publicized about you is also work. So it seems to me that if your work involves apologizing for something, just like it would at a nine to five, you're paid for it. Now let's get into why you came here. The apologies. Dr. Disrespect, real name Herschel Guy Beam the Four, was a popular Twitch streamer who was banned from the platform for seemingly no reason in 2020. He's known as the Doc, the two-time champion, a pro gamer, and also a 
He's been on YouTube since 2010, but I don't think I need to fill anyone in on who he is. On June 26, 2020, Dr. Disrespect was permanently banned from Twitch, saying that the doc broke their terms of service and they were taking appropriate action against him. For years, everyone wondered why he was banned until in June of 2024, someone who used to work for Twitch tweeted out that the doc was banned for having a minor in Twitch whispers. People were at first hesitant to believe this allegation until the doc, for whatever reason, when asked about it, said that he gets it's a hot topic, but it had been settled with no wrongdoing acknowledged and his contract was paid in full. I don't know about you, but I feel like if someone categorically hasn't committed the crime that they're being accused of, they wouldn't feel the need to use legalese to refute them. Hey, did you fix that kid? Hey, no wrongdoing acknowledged from the two-time, two-time champ. Seems like you might have that minor. Hey there, tough guy. No wrongdoing was acknowledged from the two time. The doc's statement the next day about the allegations were similar, with him saying that he can't say much due to legal obligations, but he did say this time that he didn't do anything wrong and that it had all been probed and settled. On June 24th, 2024, a game studio that the doc was involved with called Midnight Society cut ties with him publicly on X and immediately ended their relationship with him. There's actually a clip that's supposedly of the doc reading that tweet live on stream. Y you know how we run things. Here. Ah. Oh. The following day, on June 25th, the doc came clean with an admission of guilt for having inappropriate interactions with a minor over Twitch whispers, and he apologized for it. This is his confession slash apology. The Twitch ban. Hello. I'd like to make a quick statement. Let's cut the f bullshit. As you know, there's no filter with me. I've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything that I can be upfront about, and I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community as well as those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studio. A lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society, and I, and we, made this painful decision collectively to have me step down. Our team is full of incredibly talented and good people that have high career ambitions and families, and I'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened, no pictures were shared, no crimes were committed, and I never even met the individual. I went through a lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch, and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear, it was not a criminal case against me, and no criminal charges have ever been brought against me. Now, from a moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. That's on me as an adult, as a husband, and a father. It should never have happened. I get it. I'm not perfect, and I'll f***ing own my this was stupid. Now, with all that said, don't get it fucking mistaken. I've seen all the remarks and labels being thrown around so loosely. Social media is a destruction zone. I'm no fucking predator or Are you kidding me? Anyone who truly knows me knows where I stand on those things with those types of people. Fuck that. That's a different level of disgust that I fucking hate even hearing about. Don't be labeling me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations. Get the fuck out of here with that. But I think I've said what I needed to say regarding the ban itself. That's it. That's why Twitch made the decision in 2020. To my team, community, industry friends that have supported me, I apologize. I wish I could have said all this sooner. You guys have always showed me and my family love and support throughout all these years. We love you guys like you can't imagine. I have the best community and circle. If any of this has made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, but just know you have always been greatly appreciated. But trust me when I say this, to all my haters that live and breathe social media with zero real life experience, I don't give a fuck about you. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think I'm a piece of shit, that's fine. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all those years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family as mentioned on stream and I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Yeah, right.
This one was a little tough because I do think this score is a pass in this category. According to my definition, as long as the offense is acknowledged and apologized for, it scores a pass. My reasoning comes from the second paragraph being the doc's actual I'm sorry statement, and then the first line of paragraph five being the acknowledgement of the offense. Initially, I wanted to rule this a non-apology due to the apology and acknowledgement being so far apart from each other, kind of making the case that the doc is giving an umbrella apology without giving specifics as to what he's apologizing for, which I still think is what's happening here, but I don't think it's to the degree of ruling this a non-apology. This category isn't really meant to say if it was a good apology or not, rather just to rule if it is indeed an apology. I would still welcome some debate on this, but as far as what I've seen, it's an apology, so 50 points. I think the doc is sorry. I think he is sorry that the thing he tried to keep hidden has come to light and it's had some negative effects on those close to him as well as his business partners and it's had major negative effects on his personal business and reputation. Unfortunately, it's my opinion that he is much more sorry about the reputation and business effects rather than the offense happening at all. Do I think he wishes he could go back and knock some sense into himself? The answer is yes. Do I think he thinks this is as big of a deal as everyone is making it? The answer is absolutely Absolutely not. My reasoning for this is everything else in paragraph five as well as the rest of the post. It's a, yes, I did it, but it's not what I look like. He scores two out of 10 for sincerity. Eh. I mean, I hate having to rely on something outside of the apology to grade the apology, but hear me out. Two separate times before he came forward and apologized, he said that no wrongdoing occurred and that nothing wrong happened. It wasn't until the consequences for his actions and speculation grew out of control that he decided it was time to apologize. So for that reason, he scores a zero for readiness. Had he been ready at all to apologize, it seems to me that both of the no wrongdoing statements wouldn't have happened. If he was trying to save face or trying to let this blow over, he could have and probably should have just said nothing. For avoiding the apology and trying to dodge it, zero points. The doc kept it vague, and because to this day no real evidence or screenshots have come to light, doc's vagueness is all we have. He scores a 5 because while were there interactions with a minor, the answer is yes, it's probably worth about 2 points, doc being the only one to confirm this scores him an extra 3 points, so 5 points for specificity. I'm kind of torn on this one because I think the only real plan moving forward is to not let this or anything like this happen again. I feel like especially when you're dealing with minors, the plan moving forward needs to be like, I am not going to have any direct contact with minors ever again. It's the same way when you're like convicted of doing something like this, they won't let you in front of a school. I feel like when you confirm that you had inappropriate conversations with a minor, it's kind of on you to make it clear. I will, to my best of my ability, not have any sort of contact with minors outside of my family, of course, again. So because nothing like that is in this apology or apology slash response, zero points for plan moving forward. I feel like this whole post could have just been the apology by itself and all of the I'm not a PDF file could have been made on a different post. This was definitely not the most efficient way to put this out there. So five out of 10. So overall, the doc scored 62 out of a possible 100, giving him a D for disrespecting a minor. It was more than a vague, but less than a clear apology for having inappropriately interacted with a minor. The way it's put forth seems a little less than sincere as far as the actual offense is concerned. He tries his best to throw the audience off the scent and or minimize what happened. It wasn't even all too specific about what actually did or didn't happen, nor did it include an explicit plan for change in behavior despite a hefty 600 plus word count. I think the doc is well deserving of this D and I stand behind the grade I've given them. Okay, so here's what I think we could improve. First, let's get rid of the opening statement. I think, hello, I'd like to make a quick statement is fine here, but let's trim the fat here a little bit because here's the thing. Let's cut the bullshit. I mean, that's the Dr. Disrespect character talking. If you're actually trying to cut the bullshit, but then speak to the crowd as Guy for a second, not the doc. The next few paragraphs are fine, I guess. I mean, they're a little wordy, but if you feel the need to explain how you weren't allowed to say anything because of the Twitch lawsuit, I mean, 
fine, that's whatever. Next, I would say we should definitely rewrite the whole recounting of events. The key things here are that you indeed were messing an individual minor inappropriately and that's it. You don't need to add in how these were casual and mutual conversations because it almost sounds like you're trying to say consensual, which we both know isn't a factor here and would make you sound even worse. So let's cut, let's cut that whole part out. And then I actually think you would come off a bit better here and more sincere if you were to reword the whole nothing illegal happened portion. If you were to phrase this as thankfully nothing illegal happened, no pictures were shared, no crimes were committed, and I never met the individual, I think it would come off much better and you would seem to be speaking from a remorseful, genuine, and evolved mindset. With the other stuff that we cut out, I think that adding the word thankfully here does a world of good for your image. And should you never let an issue like this happen again, you stand to prove that you actually are a changed man. Personally, I don't see the benefit to mentioning the arbitration with Twitch and how it was never a criminal case. Chris Tyson didn't have a criminal case. I don't think EDP ever got charged, but that's besides the point like you don't need to have charges brought upon you for the thing you did to be wrong it's just wrong and in the court of public opinion you've already been found guilty so we can cut that part out too i will say though really good job in acknowledging how from a moral standpoint you take responsibility this was actually a huge key factor in me giving you a passing grade on the apology category so no change is necessary here the whole next paragraph is really just unnecessary and kind of discounts the good work you did in the last paragraph you broke character to accept responsibility and you snap backed in immediately after to protect your ego if you just take the l this is the best look for you no notes for the next few parts. I think this is fine. Um, but lose the, I don't, I lose this part, but trust me when I say this to all my haters, I don't give a fuck about you. Lose this. That's just, it's not necessary. This whole thing should be about you apologizing and owning up for what you did, not how the haters are hating. I would also say lose the whole, I'm not going anywhere bit. That's fine. Like get, get rid of that. If you're not going anywhere, then just don't go anywhere. If you want to address it when they make fun of you for not going anywhere, address it then. And then if you were to just end the thing with your vacation and get rid of this last line, I think we've got a much better apology. So the apology now should read like this. Hello, I'd like to make a quick statement. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community as well as to those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studio. A lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society. I and we made the painful decision collectively to have me step down. Our team is full of incredibly talented and good people that have high career ambitions and families and I'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The the answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. Thankfully, nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. Now, from a moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. That's on me as an adult, a husband, and a father. It should never have happened, and I get it. I'm not perfect, and I own my this was stupid. With that, I think that I've said what I needed to say regarding the ban itself. That's it. That's why Twitch made the decision in 2020. To my team, community, industry friends that have supported me, I apologize. I wish I could have said all this sooner. You guys have always shown me and my family love and support throughout all these years. We love you guys like you can't imagine. I have the best community and circle. If any of this has made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, but just know you've always been greatly appreciated. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think that I'm a piece of that's fine. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all those years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family as mentioned on stream and I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. I didn't do the math to see how this rewritten apology would have scored him, but I'm going to imagine he gets somewhere around a B for this one, which I mean, short, sweet, gets everything out, fits almost every requirement for the rubric. He misses out on readiness and then he also misses out on plan moving forward because I can't exactly write that for him. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Back, 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 back.
iDubbbz, or Ian Joma, used to be my hero. A bastion of free speech, a man who didn't care who he hurt in his quest to tell it like it is, and a man who I ultimately unsubbed from because he didn't eat the horse shit. A lot of you yahoos are probably gonna say, well, why didn't you eat the horse shit? <laughs> it would've been funny if you ate the horse shit, iDubbbz. Unsubbed, because you didn't eat the horse shit. But we all grow and change, and due to whatever circumstance, he became tired of his old antics, his frequent use of the N-word and the F-slur, and his content cop series where he correctly, I might add, called out creators on YouTube for their weird, cringy, and sometimes, a lot of the times, hypocritical and or unethical content. He got woke, and when he did so, he also went broke. I don't know if he actually went broke, it just made sense when I wrote it. These days, it seems like videos about iDubs generally get more views and attention than videos from iDubs. As of late, he's become something of a tinkerer, building arcade games, making unsinkable ship toys, and defining what a white person insult is. There are a million iDubs rise and fall videos that you could look up on YouTube right now, but for our purposes, we're only going to be taking a look at what iDubs thought he needed to apologize for from his perspective. In his video, I Miss the Old iDubs, Ian apologizes for two things. One, he apologizes for making the Content Cop series, especially Content Cop Tana Mojo. And secondly, he apologizes to black people and minority groups as a whole for the use of certain slurs and his message from the Content Cop Tana video. Here's some of that video for context. We are very stupid to hold the word at this colossally high standard, whereas every other slur, that, that can be used in a comedic sense or editorial sense, but not this one, because that one has history. Well, guess what, Rita? All the other ones have history too. Either all of them are okay, or none of them are okay. Tana? You are dumb, say. It's incredible how much more intelligent you would have looked if during the event where I came and said, say, if you just said, wow, you're a very uncomfortable person and you're not very funny. What a pathetic joke. You would have just destroyed me. But you couldn't do that because you're the most predictable human being on the planet. At the end of the day, everything's a choice. Black people can choose to get offended by black slurs. Asian people can choose to get offended by Asian slurs. White people can choose to get offended by black slurs. And Tana Mongu can choose to get offended by black slurs. Coming in at 1 minute and 41 seconds, his apology is the shortest one on today's list. It's so short that, in fact, I'll be able to play it in its entirety rather than cutting the important bits together and giving my commentary. So here's that. I'm sorry to everyone that I made content cop videos on. I, I still don't like the majority of you, and that's fine, but I can recognize that you did not deserve the hate and harassment that I sent your way. I, I particularly want to apologize to Tana. Tana, I'm sorry. I should have never made that video. I harassed Tana in person and then harassed her online, and that's deplorable behavior. It's so stupid. I'm also sorry to all the black viewers and minority groups who had to put up with that video and put up with, you know, the phrases. I, I said either it's all okay or none of it's okay. And that's just so dangerous and stupid. I have made content that I'm proud of over the years. It hasn't been as consistent as maybe I'd like it to have been. But, you know, there is a lot of content that I think had a net positive on the world. And, you know, I'm going to strive to continue on that trend. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm, I'm absolutely going to continue to make mistakes, but I want the mistakes to be a lot smaller and a lot less serious. It's clear to me that iDubs is giving an actual apology here. No manipulative language, no qualifiers like if you were offended or if I hurt you, just a simple I'm sorry, and he's sorry. A full 50 points awarded for this actually being an apology. While I would rather not rely on words or actions outside of the apology, I think it would do us some good in this situation. iDubbbz leading up to this was already on something of an apology tour leading up to this moment. Another bit of context to further back this up is that later in the video, he renounces and disowns any people looking for him to return to his old style of content and behavior. So with this bit of context and with him being rather consistent in his reflection of his past in the apology section, I'm inclined to believe that he is being 100% sincere. This one was a little odd for a few reasons, because to the majority of people who were a fan of iDubbbz, he really had nothing to apologize for, and no one was really expecting him to come forward and do it. What he's apologizing for took place years and years and years ago, and so normally he would have scored pretty low on this, but again, this isn't something I think the audience needed from iDubbbz. With that said, iDubbbz does say later in the video that it did take him some time to be ready to walk back and admit regret and remorse for content cop Tana, so I can't give a perfect score here, but it does feel weird taking points away. For this, Ian receives 8 out of 10 for readiness. 
Easy win for Egan with this category. He gives a clear apology of who he's apologizing to and why. He apologizes for every content cop victim for sending what he now sees as undeserved hate and harassment their way. He then specifically apologizes to Tana for the same reason, as well as him harassing her online and in person. Then he apologizes to black people and other minorities as a whole for his all of it's okay or none of it's okay messaging, along with various use of slurs that he used in the video. So regardless, if you or me personally Personally, again, aren't sure if this apology was needed or not. His apology is very specific and leaves nothing up to interpretation. 10 points. Ian's plan moving forward is this. He has made some content in the past that he perceives as having a positive net impact on the world. And he's going to strive to continue making content that has a positive impact on the world. He acknowledges that he's going to make some mistakes moving forward, but he will be striving to make those mistakes smaller and less frequent. And I mean, fair enough, what else can he do? It seems to me that the only real effective plan moving forward, if you don't like and disagree with the content that you've made in the past, is to make content that you agree with and that represents who you are now and in the future. In other words, Ian's old content no longer represents represents who he is. He grew up and he grew to see his old stuff as toxic and so he issues an apology and promises to be consistent with his new set of values. And I mean, without having a time machine to go back and remove the content before it was posted, that's about all you can do. He also pledges to match and donate all of the money that his apology video makes to an organization that would have been particularly affected by his old content. I can't say that donating to charity is out of character for Ian. See Creator Clash 1, not so much Creator Clash 2. And so I can't dock points for this. Even though I don't think this was entirely necessary, he gets 10 points. Short and sweet, just like we liked them. For what he was apologizing for, he didn't need 20 minutes to do it. It was like a steak with all the fat cut off. Sure, it was half the size of when you bought it, but you're just eating the meat without any fat to chew on. Didn't give the audience anything to get bored with and got his entire apology out effectively in under two minutes. 10 points. Easy. Overall, iDubs, the puppet master, the content cop himself gets 98 out of 100 for this apology. The apology was a real apology. It was as sincere as it could be. He took his time to get around to it, but ultimately he went through with the apology and he was specific and articulate about what he was apologizing about, laid out an appropriate path for him moving forward, and he did it all without rambling or boring anyone with the details. Now, I personally do not think that iDubs really needed to apologize for anything he was talking about in the video, and I'm definitely not alone in that thought. However, if you can manage to put that aside, along with any nostalgia you have for the guy, it was a pretty good apology. I mean, it scored 98 out of 100, and I made this rubric before watching his apology. You can definitely tell that over the years, he has had quite the shift in personality, and with that, I imagine that he's placed a lot of guilt on himself. During the whole video, he seems to be guilt-stricken, and one of the best ways I know to get rid of guilt is to get it off your chest and apologize. I also think he gave the apology because he really, really does think that he did something wrong, and that was worth apologizing for. So regardless of what you think on him, he did exactly what he set out to do. Because of the nature of it, I don't think I have any notes that would improve the apology. Should Ian do anything else that he needs to apologize for? I hope he would do it again, just like this one. Colleen Ballinger is a creator who's been on the platform since 2008 and is most known for her character, Miranda Sings. She makes song parodies and does live shows as the character and has been entertaining adults and children alike the entire time. My sister and my mother were both big fans of Miranda Sings back in the day, and I actually attended a Miranda Sings live show for one of my sister's birthday back in the day. Here's a pic of me with my Miranda lipstick. So call me uninformed, lazy, whatever you will, but apparently there were a few dramas that happened all around the same time, so if I'm not talking about the drama that you're thinking about, I'm sorry. The drama leading up to her hi apology video is as follows. In June of 2023, some screenshots had leaked that apparently show Colleen Ballinger talking inappropriately with underage fans. Screenshots allegedly showing her asking Adam McIntyre, who was a minor at the time, what their favorite position was sexually, as well as photos resurfacing of a little boy with his hands down Colleen pants as Miranda sings at one of her live shows. I really wish I'd been paying more attention at the time this was all happening because looking back, the whole thing is very messy, but suffice it to say, Colleen's offense was at least being super weird with minors and at most her being a full-on groomer. If you'd like more lore on this, there are a ton of videos on YouTube. You can also go to Adam McIntyre's channel because they talk about it quite a bit. So I actually didn't know this when I started research for this video and unfortunately I'm writing this portion last, but I noticed that Colleen isn't apologizing in this video. For whatever reason, I could have sworn this was a 10 minute apology video with a ukulele backing track, but no, she 
she doesn't actually apologize at all. But, 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 her video is one of the top worst rated YouTuber apologies. And if Moist Critical calls it an apology video, then that's all I need to be able to throw this into my video. Unfortunately, because this apology is so long, I can't, there's no real good way to cut it up. So we're just gonna go straight into the rubric here bit by bit and play the clips that back me up. Listen, as much as I would love to throw a 10 minute video into here, I just can't do that. So we're gonna grade as we go. Future Jax here, you can tell it's the future because it's the next day. Um, listen, I tried my best to try to like cobble Colleen's video into like a watchable type gradle as we go type thing. Um, but I'm not the kind of editor who can do that kind of dramatic storytelling or cutting for context in this video. So I'm just gonna assume that you've seen the video um, and then we're just gonna play the next segment. Really sorry about this, but just you can watch her video and then you can come back and watch this part. I mean, I, if you haven't seen Colleen Ballinger's apology video, this isn't on me, this is on you. Zero points awarded because although she does state that she feels like shit and she made some mistakes, she doesn't actually apologize. Instead, she kind of throws herself a pity party and for a second she makes you think she's going to apologize, but then she doesn't. So uh, no points awarded for this category because it is very clear that it is not an apology can't be a sincere apology if you don't apologize. In all seriousness though, I do sincerely think that Colleen thinks that she has nothing to apologize for. So if this were a category for how sincere you are in general, I would have given it a 10 points, zero points, because she's not sincere about thinking she had done something wrong, which clearly she did. There's a video that exists where it shows Colleen's video, her denying the round, the things she did, but then they like clip together the screenshots with the video, like of the bad things that she had done. So. Uh, uh, seek that one out. Maybe I'll leave it in the description. I'm pretty sure this video came out relatively quickly after all the screenshots were leaked and allegations were made. So 10 out of 10 for the readiness and responsiveness, even though it's more of a response video than an apology again. So do what you will. I mean, come on. She says, let's talk about the facts and then proceeds to not talk about any facts. She does talk about how earlier in her career that she would overshare because she was a loser, but that's it. Now, is it a fact that she would overshare? Yeah, probably, but overshare about what? The allegations are out there, but she doesn't address them specifically. She talks about the toxic gossip train, manipulation station, gaslighting and rumors, but again, doesn't bring up any examples of what they are. I really would have loved her to go into specifics to at least try to prove her innocence and or lack of bad intentions, or even something to back up her blatant stupidity that she talks about. If you're this confident that you did nothing wrong and that you expect this video to go well, I would expect something like that. The whole video is just a large critique on cancel culture. Two out of 10 for edging the audience on specifics. I'm gonna take her at her word when she says that this isn't something she does anymore, meaning the oversharing and talking with minors on the internet. And if I'm taking her at her word, then her plan moving forward is halfway acceptable. So five points. One point is awarded for length and that's just because the video exists. No more points were awarded because she spends 10 minutes talking about actually nothing other than cancel culture sucks, wasted time, lack of substance, inefficient way to get the message across. Colleen Ballinger gets a total of 18 points for her apology slash response. She could have scored higher if at any point she wound up actually apologizing, but I guess we'll be left with this. The shitty thing about it is that for the most part, I agree with what she's saying about cancel culture. I think it's a bad look to take an anti-cancel culture stance when you're talking about minors, but if it had been almost anything else, I would have agreed with her. In the end, if she really, really thought she did nothing wrong, she should have just listened to her PR team and kept her mouth shut. Here's a really bad example, but Cody Ko has been keeping his mouth shut and from his perspective, it must seem like it's working, even though his alleged crime is worse. I mean, listen, his YouTube career is shot, but he's still DJing in Vegas. So the way I see it, he still got enough goodwill with some people who are going to pay him enough money to pursue a career. Obviously, I think that when you're accused of something as wild as horrible as this, you should face the music if and when you're confirmed to have committed the crime. However, if nothing is proven and you can't bring receipts backing up your innocence, I do not understand why you wouldn't listen to your PR team and just keep your mouth shut, even if you're convinced that you did nothing wrong. And furthermore, attacking the people criticizing you and then again, not bringing receipts to back up your side of the story, just I don't think can have any benefit. So no wonder people hated this response. All talk, no evidence. My number one note would have been to listen to your PR team. Keep your mouth shut and continue as normal. People of course are going to stop watching you because of all the drama, but I would imagine that a ton of people will keep watching you based off of the cult of personality that you've created over the years. Lean into that. 
be grateful for that part of your audience and keep going until a response from you is unavoidable. And in the case where you are 100% in the wrong, you, she is 100% in the wrong, but I'm talking from like her perspective, make the apology video correctly. I mean, you already did one that was well received when you sent used undergarments to a minor. I know you know how to pull this off. No ukulele, no fancy lyrics, eat the humble pie, admit you were wrong, defend who you are now while acknowledging the mistake you've made and level with your audience. It's really not that hard. But those are the three creators we were talking about today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you were able to stick it through. I'm sorry you had to listen to me play the ukulele at the front end. What can I say? I'm a sucker for theatrics. And since we're at the end of the video now, I would like to say thank you everyone for 1,000 subscribers. We made a Discord that I'd like you to join. And if you'd like to see more from me in between videos, feel free to follow me on my socials. I'm on Instagram as OnlyJacks1999. I'm on Twitter as uh, OnlyJacks with a zero instead of the O. And I love you guys. I want to say thank you so much for 1,000 subscribers. We're almost at 1,500 and it doesn't seem real. I don't know. It was like this months ago I was thinking about making a YouTube channel. Well, a year ago I had made this YouTube channel and posted some stuff that I thought would just be an obvious cash grab but that had no real um, like effort or like I, I wasn't a fan of what I was doing. I had saw the Quentin reviews thing where he reviewed every single episode of iCarly or something and I was like oh I could do that. That'd be easy money. Um, but there's a reason there's only three of them. It's because they sucked and I used ChatGPT in the last one. I will say I've been very much enjoying this kind of content. I'm enjoying the fact that you guys seem to be enjoying it. And uh, I just want to say thanks. We're going to freestyle this last part. YouTube apologies. Thanks for sitting with me while we went over some YouTube apologies. The next video will involve Chris Tyson, YouTube apologies. Don't forget to click the bell button if you've subscribed, and you should also subscribe or like and dislike the video. of the video you should subscribe or maybe just leave a like leave a comment if you please but i'd rather you subscribe i check that shit like every day and when that subscriber number goes up well my heart goes up to the sky when you do subscribe